If you've ever priced out one of these floating fountain pumps, you'd know these things can cost between $500 and $2,000, but I wanted to try to build one myself out of some leftover parts along with a utility pump. And because I don't have any electricity down here by the pond, I'm gonna be using my EcoFlow Delta Max. This power station will be able to power my pump until I can get a more permanent installation using either solar or by trying to run a cable. After this thing was built, what really blew me away was how far this pump was throwing the water. You can see that there are ripples running all across the surface, and that means more air in the water and oxygen, and that's gonna be perfect because I have some plans for this pond this summer that include adding some fish. Those fancy floating pumps are nothing more than a utility pump surrounded by a type of styrofoam or some mechanism that allows them to float. So I wanted to do this on a much cheaper scale. First, I needed to create a kind of floating island. So to do that, I'm gonna use one of these Sterilite organizer boxes along with some leftover packing foam. So I realized if I cut out the middle of this, I could eventually get it to kind of squeeze around it. So it's acting something like a life preserver and those holes in it look pretty bad. That's because my kids shot this thing full of BBs and for once their destruction actually worked out really well. These holes will allow water to get into the box. Now I did add some others, but if you're gonna do this from scratch, I would recommend using a type of soldering iron or something that creates heat. You'll melt much cleaner holes, and I think an even better idea would be to use one of these life preservers, get a round one, then put a plastic flower pot in the middle, and then just create the drainage holes. With my simple floating island ready to go, I just needed to use my utility pump. Now almost every pump in the world allows you to adapt to a garden hose. So I took that fitting, then I went into PVC, and I just used regular half inch PVC to go up about three and a half feet. Now of course you could do many different things with this design. You could put a nozzle on the top, you could cut it shorter, and it'd be more of a bubbler than it would be a fountain. Now the simple design is gonna work great with pretty much any type of utility pump, but if your pump is small, you may not be able to power a stock quite that long. So you can adapt this to fit your own needs. The reason you wanna have this pump floating on the surface as opposed to the bottom is if you put it down there, it is gonna be getting clogged constantly. By floating on the surface, you're very unlikely to pick up any kind of debris. The other thing you'll notice is this floating design is self-leveling. Soon as it fills up with water, all I need to do is put in my pump. A lot of utility pumps don't have particularly long electric cords, but you can actually extend them. You'd of course start by finding a suitable electric cord, but then you need to splice them. So I'd recommend the best way to do that is to use well splices. These are designed to be completely submerged for years and they are really reliable. Because I wanna put fish in here soon, I needed to get started learning how to move water, what would work, how it would look. You could certainly do something fancier or just buy a commercial pump. But for me, I am really pleased with the way this thing turned out and it let me reuse that utility pump. Some utility pumps can't really handle running 24 hours a day, so you might end up burning your pump out much sooner than you expected. But nowadays, most of these things shouldn't have any problems running continuously because they're typically used for things like sump pumps where they are designed to be run for extremely long periods of time. And of course you notice you don't hear any noise of a generator in the background. That's because that Delta Max is completely running this pump. It uses about 180 watts of power. Now of course for long term use, you're gonna have to hook up solar panels, protect the Delta Max or do something else. But this is an easy way to test this thing out, see how it performed. And if you're looking to build a floating pump of your own, this is just an idea. It was simple, didn't really cost me anything and I'm really pleased with the results. But if you have better ideas how you built your own pump or things that I could have done differently, be sure to comment below. I'd definitely like to hear it. And maybe I can incorporate those ideas into a future video. And if you wanna take advantage of the final day of the Amazon Prime deals from EcoFlow, be sure to look at the top comment where I've put a special coupon code where you can save an additional 8% off of their already discounted prices.